and that is how I ended up joining the KKK, instead of AAA. Interesting. Hi, I'm Hugh Jess, and I'm joined by award-winning feminist author, Mary Hinge. She will be telling us all about the Fawcett Society, but first she has something to plug. Hello Mary, and welcome. Hello Hugh, and thank you. So what are you plugging today? I want to promote a new feminist radio station that I will be a regular DJ on. It's called W-I-I-F-M. What do the initials stand for? What's in it for me? We will use W-I-I-F-M to spread endless lies and propaganda about how women are victims. What kind of music will you play? No music, just endless pissing and moaning from lying feminists 24-7. I'll be sure to tune in. Let us move on with today's show. You want to talk about the Fawcett Society? Please explain a little about it. Sure. It's a charity based in London, and they claim to fight for equality between the genders. They have existed for over 140 years, but changed their name to the Fawcett Society over 50 years ago. Equality between the genders sounds like such a worthy cause. It's about time someone pushed for the genders to be treated equally. It is a worthy cause, but the problem is, the Fawcett Society do not care about equality at all. They only claim they do, so they have a cause to hide behind whenever anyone calls them on their bullshit. Hiding behind a worthy cause sounds exactly like the kind of thing feminists would do. Did the Fawcett Society have anything to do with feminism? Absolutely. This is given away by the fact they also choose to hide behind the name of a good woman, so as to make it more difficult to attack their harsh shit. You see, Millicent Fawcett was a suffragette who peacefully campaigned for women to get a vote, so if you attack the Fawcett Society, they will try to insinuate that you're attacking the name of a good woman, when ironically, it is the Fawcett Society themselves, who continually dragged her good name through the mud. Where can I find out more about the Fawcett Society? You could visit their website, but I must warn you, it is best to steer clear of their website, why is that? Because it is filled to the brim with a mixture of bullshit and horse shit, making it very difficult to read anything on the site, as your eyes will be watering most of the time. The smell will also linger in your house for months. Consider me warned. Would you spare us from the stench and tell us about their website? Of course. One of the first things that sticks out is the god-awful grammar, punctuation, spelling, and missing words. It really does appear, as if it was written by a demented chimp, a teacher of women's studies, or someone who only got their job because of affirmative action. Anything else that sticks out on their site? Yes, on the top of every page is a picture of an ugly, pasty face bent with a t-shirt on that says, this is what a feminist looks like, which does no favors for feminists at all, as she resembles a clown with half their makeup on. It also clearly demonstrates what the Fawcett Society are really all about, feminism, and not gender equality. You say they are a charity, but what exactly do they do? According to them, they claim that creating awareness, leading debate, and driving change, is what they do. That sounds like a huge dose of ass gravy. It most certainly is. These people are not ensuring that starving children are fed, that the homeless have a roof over their head, or that animals don't suffer needlessly. Their only aim is to spread propaganda about the genders, so as to secure victim status for women, resulting in most women thinking that they need credence like the Fawcett Society, to look out for their interests. Feminists telling everyone that women are victims, I'm shocked. What other cods wallop dribbles out a huge gap in their faces? There is just so much, it's difficult to know where to start. There are so many insinuations, so many lies, so many non-specifics, and so many contradictions. This does not surprise me coming from feminists. Let us start with the lies, tell us about them. Certainly. There are obviously the well-worn ones, like the gender wage gap, and the glass ceiling, but since we have completely blown them apart in our previous videos, there's no need for backtracking. Instead, I think we should focus on their other lies. I agree. Let us hear them. In their own words, they say, we have real influence right at the top of UK politics, and among those who make decisions, due to our lobbying power. This is hilarious, as Britain is a democracy, and in order to have real influence, you have to be democratically elected into government, something that the Fawcett Society is not. What they are really saying is, we are quite loud and obnoxious, so someone in government is bound to hear us. So please give us more money for our company cars. What other lies do they come out with? They constantly claim that women are the real victims of poverty, even going so far as to state on their site, poverty in Britain has a female face. This is obviously utter nonsense, especially when you take into account that over 95% of all homeless people in Britain are men. When the Fawcett Society say poverty, they mean not being able to update to the latest mobile phone every week. 
and not being able to go out drinking with the girls every night, they do not mean so poor as to have to live on the streets with no food. What a bunch of lying toe rags. What other shit do they scout? They claim that 30,000 pregnant women are forced out of their jobs every year, and they insinuate that the reason they lost their job is because they became pregnant. This stinks to the high heavens of grade A horse shit. You see, out of all employees, a pregnant woman is the most untouchable. She cannot be sacked for being pregnant, or for misconduct, because she will say. It's because she is pregnant, and bring a lawsuit to the company. She cannot lose her job, after having the baby, it has to be kept open for her by law, until she is ready to return, even if she never goes back, her job must remain available for her to return to. The real story is simple, lots of women give up work, when they get pregnant, because they want to prepare their lives for motherhood, and take it easy, while they are pregnant. Not because they are forced to leave, it's all up to them, the choice is theirs, and of course, the Fawcett Society see women having options as a form of discrimination. What an odd bunch. Any more lies? Here is a beauty. They say, only an estimated 1.9% of counselors are black and minority ethnic women, and they also say, black and minority ethnic women counselors are especially rare, and to top it all off, they then have the nerve to say, we think, but we can't even be sure as their numbers are not even being monitored. So let us be clear here, they are telling us that less than 2% of counselors are ethnic minorities, and it is said, as if that is somehow discriminatory towards ethnic minority women, and then they say they don't even know, if it's true. So they are just spouting bullshit after bullshit, even going as far as to admit that is what they are doing. So they are claiming victimhood for ethnic minority women, based on nothing more than a guess. Yes. This is something they do a lot, they insinuate left, right, and center, they talk a lot, but never actually say anything of any worth. Well, we have certainly established that they are a bunch of liars, who cowardly hide behind a good woman's name, but you mentioned the many insinuations they come out with. Would you please go through some of them? Of course. There are the many insinuations about the numbers of women in certain areas of life, and although the statistics they use are accurate, the insinuation is always the same, that the numbers are the way they are because of some form of discrimination, unfairness, or mistreatment of women. The fact is, the numbers are only the way they are, because women live in a free society, where they can choose to do, or not to do, certain things with their lives, or in other words, women's choices dictate the numbers, not discrimination. What are some of these statistics? Women make up less than 20% of politicians. 96% of directors of the UK's top 100 companies are men. 7% of top police officers are women. 23% of civil service top management are women. 9% of editors of national newspapers are women. And 18% of trade union general secretaries are women. If they are all about equality between the genders, then I can only assume they have the statistics for the number of women in other fields, such as garbage disposal, road maintenance, oil rigs, sewage department, building sites, the armed forces, security, and other dirty dangerous work, where they are exposed to the elements. I mean, the Fawcett Society must surely want parity in these jobs as well, because as it stands now, only a very small minority of women work in these areas. Of course they don't want parity in those fields, they don't have any power or influence, and aren't considered top jobs. The Fawcett Society are only concerned about getting parity in the top jobs, as they believe that equality can be cherry-picked, due to their severe lack of intelligence. What other insinuations do the jellyheads at the Fawcett Society use? They say, out of every 100 rape cases reported to the police, just seven end in the rapist being caught and punished. The insinuation is clear, that over 90% of rapists get away with it, this is evident in the way they say, just seven end in the rapist, being caught and punished, so even though there is not a case for court, in over 90% of reported sex crimes, they still assume a rape must have happened, if a sex crime has been alleged. The fact is, it is seven out of every 100 allegations of a sexual crime, not specifically rape, that are reported to the police that end in a conviction, 46% of alleged rape cases, that make it to court end in a conviction, so that is nearly half of all cases of rape that are worthy of court time, that end in a rapist being convicted, not 7%. Why do over 90% of cases not make it to court? Many reasons. A lack of evidence is one, the severity of the allegation is another, I mean it's not fair to send a man, to court for sexual harassment, because he looked at a woman, it's not worthy of the court's time. Sometimes the accuser drops out of the justice system, by withdrawing their complaint, the main reason, which of course the Fawcett Society avoids like a plague, is that quite a lot of allegations of sex crimes are false. Feminists exaggerating and lying about rape, I never thought I'd see the day. Any other laughable insinuations? Plenty, as I said, their website is full of shit. 
They say, the number of women in jail, has more than doubled over the past 10 years, because the courts are getting harsher, not because women are committing more crime. The insinuation here is, that the justice system is harsh on women, and getting harsher. To the Fawcett Society, women who commit crimes and end up in prison, is proof of a system that treats women harshly. But what they fail to mention, is that if women did not want to go to prison, then they shouldn't commit crimes in the first place, you know, the same rules, that men have had to follow for years, so much so, they even invented a phrase, that covers it. Don't do the crime, if you can't do the time. True that. Any more insinuations? Yes, there is one in particular, that is utterly atrocious, and clear-cut proof of what the Fawcett Society is all about. On their side it states, women's poverty is closely linked to that of children, the government will not reach its target of eradicating child poverty, without tackling women's poverty. This is one hell of a disgusting insinuation, and that is, that women should take priority over children. It's also a perfect example, of how those disgusting credence at a faucet society hide behind children, because if you call bullshit on this, which you would be right to do, they will claim you are against the idea of helping poverty-stricken children. Just an absolutely vomit-inducing bunch of witches. What other examples do you have? Here is another example of what they are really all about. They state, Fawcett recommends that the social security system should encourage women and men to share responsibilities for paid employment and unpaid work in the home more equally. They insinuate that the government should have a department that is allowed to come into every couple's home and dictate to them what constitutes housework and what each person should do. This is what they want, the right to interfere in everyone's life and boss them around, all in the name of equality. They also call it unpaid work, because as feminists, they cannot fathom the possibility that being at home taking care of the children offers rewards that are worth more than money. I assume when the Fawcett Society says, unpaid work in the home, they mean taking out the garbage, mowing the lawn, cleaning the gutters, and general home maintenance like putting up shelves. God no, they mean the stuff that only women have deemed housework, so all the stuff that men generally do will be ignored or ridiculed in some way. I'm feeling nauseous with a reek of horse shit around here. Surely there can't be any more examples. There certainly can. How about when they say, we are still campaigning to make sure women have an equal voice in politics, and wherever important decisions are made. This is insinuating that women don't already have an equal voice, and that they need a faucet society to help them attain it. Do women have an equal voice in politics? Yes, it's called a vote, the exact same voice men have in politics. Good point. Any more examples? They state, we particularly found that politicians treat child care as the almost exclusive interest of women, with little or no attention paid to the pay gap, or violence against women. What these morons are insinuating here, is that lies, based on wage gaps and domestic violence, should be of higher importance to women than child care. What they fail to take into account, due to their heads being as empty as a hermit's phone book, is that most women put their children as their number one priority, and that most women are intelligent, and therefore could not give a rat's ass about feminist lies and hate mongering. Very true. Any more examples of their low intelligence? Yes, listen to this horse's piss. Regarding the last general election, they state, we also kept a close watch on whether the main three UK parties were picking women as candidates, and just as importantly, putting them in winnable seats. Equality between the genders my ass. They clearly want women to cheat their way into politics by being placed in winnable seats. They are unaware that women are more than capable of being fairly elected into politics, without an unfair advantage, just ask Margaret Thatcher. Is it possible for any more shit, to come out their mouths? It sure is. They say, we have also found that positive action, such as all women shortlists, have proven to be the only reliable way, to significantly increase the number of women representatives, and this is the case the world over. The message is clear here, the only reliable way, to get more women into politics, is to use cheating, manipulation, and undemocratic methods. They also stupidly insinuate that women are incapable of competing with men, and as such, men should be excluded in a democratic process in order to help women excel. All women shortlist, the ultimate insult to intelligent, capable women the world over. That's correct, and the Fawcett Society have stated that all women shortlists are their number one success. So the most grotesque, degrading, patronizing, condescending insult to intelligent women everywhere is their number one success. Absolute dough balls. What other examples do you have? This one is a beauty. They state, people often select in their image, and because the top of organizations are generally white and male, they stay white and male. The insinuation here is, that white men have an advantage over everyone else, and that any success they have, should not be put down to hard work, but down to favoritism. It also insinuates, that white men are both sexist and racist by default. What a monstrous way to discredit, and insult all white men. 
I am not finished yet. It, it gets much better than that. How so? Well, let us focus on the Fawcett Society's trustees. They are responsible for the work they do, and how the donated money is spent. There are nine trustees in total. Nine trustees? I assume with the Fawcett Society's drive to ensure equality in society, the trustees must be a real mixed bunch, right? Wrong. Out of the nine trustees, nine of them are women. So they claim that white men are guilty of hiring in their own image, and yet they themselves have nine women, who were all basically voted in by themselves, in charge of the money that is spent. The hypocrisy is astounding. So what did they spend the money on? Company cars, fuel to keep the company cars rolling, the latest computers for their office, the latest mobile phone, office decorations, and petty cash for the staff to buy work-related necessities like perfume, shoes, and the odd bit of jewelry. Whatever is left will be spent on advertising how all women are victims and all men are vicious thugs. Well I think, but I can't even be sure as the numbers are not even being monitored. So just like the Fawcett Society did when trying to claim victim status for minority women, I will just have to guess. I see what you did there. If you have any more examples of their bullshit, I'm going to have to get some air freshener up in this piece. Well forget the air freshener, and light some incense instead, because there are heaps and heaps of examples of harsh manure, to give you. They say, a culture of working long hours in the office to prove your commitment, might have been fine, when men earned the crust, but it's not fine, now that women are part of the workforce. This is all just ridiculous beyond belief, which is not surprising coming from the bobbleheads at the Fawcett Society. They insinuate that working long hours is a dream for men, and that men only do so to prove themselves. The fact is, men work long hours to put meat on their families' forks, sacrificing valuable time with their families to do so, so to suggest otherwise is just insulting. Also insulting, is the way they claim to speak on women's behalf, excuse me, but women are able to speak for themselves, and do not have a collective opinion on everything. So maybe on behalf of intelligent women, they should shut their fat mouths, and stop claiming to speak for us. Well said Mary. Any more insinuations? Yes. They state, as the number of women in politics increases, matters of importance to women, move further up the political agenda. It's, like they can't open their mouths without offending women. To say that women in politics, look out for women's needs, is saying that women are incompetent politicians, as they would only serve women, instead of people in general. I am sure some women in politics, are biased in this way. But to suggest they all are is just insulting, and another way of saying people should not take female politicians seriously, or respect them. It could be worse, at least they don't tell women which party they should vote for. How naive of you, Hugh. You see, they state, at the current rate of change, it will take labor around 20 years, to get to 50-50 women and men, the Lib Dems around 40 years, and the Conservatives around 400. So you see, they are telling women loud and clear, vote labor if you want women, to be cheated into government. It's just another insinuation. Are there enough brain-dead women for such tactics to work? Labor were just in power for about 14 years, you tell me. Worrying stuff for Britain? Let us move on to the non-specifics you mentioned, please explain them. Sure. They have these plastered all over the website, it's where they say something is happening, usually some site ask attempt at attaining victim status for women, but they fail to mention any specifics whatsoever. Please give us an example. Sure, they state, social and economic justice remains a distant dream for women in the UK, which is why Fawcett's work is needed as much as ever. If anyone outside Britain were to read that, they would assume all women in Britain are the biggest victims in the world, yet there are absolutely no facts at all, no specifics, they just move on as if what they say is true, and doesn't need explaining. Any other non-specifics? Yes, they say women experience discrimination at work, but again, they do not go into specifics, like what kind of discrimination they experience, they just say it and move on, hoping that most women won't question it, and assume it's true. Any more examples? Sure. They state that, the combination of racism, and sexism, makes black and minority ethnic women particularly vulnerable to poverty. They say this without providing any examples whatsoever, it's as amateur as you can get. It sure is. Any more. This is brilliant, they state, in poor households, women often deny themselves basics, such as food, in order to protect their families from the consequences of poverty. No numbers, no statistics, no facts, nothing, they just say it and move on, absolutely pathetic. I agree. You said they contradicted themselves a number of times, please give us an example. Along with the woman's name they hide behind, Millicent Fawcett, they also mention the wage gap on every page, even though they also state on their website, Fawcett campaigned for, and celebrated the passing of the Equal Pay Act in 1970. Isn't it funny how they celebrated something, yet completely forgot it happened in most of their paragraphs? 
Maybe they got so drunk celebrating it, they just forgot it happened. Man, I've been there. Do you have any other contradictions? Yes. They piss and moan all throughout their side about gender stereotypes, and how they are a negative thing, yet the contradicting assholes use the very same gender stereotypes when it suits them. To give an example of this, let me quote this horse shit from their site. Our workplace is still under value of women's work, jobs that have traditionally been done, and continue to be done, mainly by women, so for instance. A police officer is paid more than a nurse, a bin man gets more than a child care worker. They must have forgot to mention, that apples are paid more than oranges, as that would be an equally fair comparison. Is it discriminatory that police officers are paid more than nurses, and then men are paid more than child care workers? No. It would only be discriminatory, if male police officers were paid more than female police officers, or if female nurses were paid more than male nurses, and so on. To compare two completely different jobs in this way is only excusable, if you have recently had a lobotomy, are in a strange jacket, or have a head filled with Christmas decorations. Agreed. Any other contradictions? On one web page they state, the workplace is a system designed for men, yet on another page they say, women are more likely to work in industries that have flexible working arrangements. So which one is it, are women catered for in the workplace, or is it a system designed exclusively for men, they can't make their bloody minds up? It seems they are always chopping and changing. All the time. You know the way they never shot the hell up about the low number of women in politics, and use that fact as some sort of evidence that women are held back in politics. Yes. Well listen to what else they say. Women votes are vital to any election result, the majority of voters are women, and they also say, did you know, that women are more likely than men, to vote in local elections. It seems, that those at the Fawcett Society, who have vacant signs on their heads, are completely unable to put two and two together, and understand that it's women who don't want women in politics, since there are more of them. And they are more likely to vote. It's obvious that their brain cells are in danger of dying of loneliness. What other contradictions are there? They state that, politicians are there to represent you, your priorities, concerns, and opinions, as they owe their position to people's votes, it is important for them to listen to their constituents. Yet they constantly bang on about how more women are needed in government, in order for women's needs to be met. So which one is it, do politicians serve the people, or only those born similar to themselves? Again. They have serious difficulty, making their minds up on this subject. They sure do. Any more examples of a contradiction on their part? Yes. They state, Fawcett is the UK's leading campaign for equality between women and men, where there's an inequality gap between women and men, we are working to close it. Well I call bullshit on that one, as they are talking out their chocolate starfish. If they cared about closing inequality gaps between the genders, then they wouldn't say things like, Fawcett is constantly lobbying government on a wide range of issues important to women. Or, we are actively working to increase women's representation in local and national government, to make sure female voices don't go unheard. They wouldn't make everything about women, if they cared about equality. They also wouldn't ignore negative things, that mostly affect men, like suicide or homelessness, and they completely ignore these facts all the time, which just goes to show what an absolute waste of time their existence is. They can't even acknowledge the very things they claim to be fighting for, inequality between the genders. They are a total laughing stock. Anything else they do that makes them look ridiculous? God yes, wait until you hear this one. They claim that the government, the social security system, employers, and unions, are all responsible for changing the stereotypes of men and women. They must have been outside having a piss, when God was handing out brains, if they think a government should have a department to tackle, stereotypes. This is how dictatorial they are, they think we should all collectively be told what to think by the government. It's just absolutely mental. It certainly is. Any more bullshit? Plenty. One of their solutions, to increase the number of women in top jobs is, flexible workplaces for employees at all levels, so that having caring responsibilities does not exclude you from top jobs. This is why a fly inside their head is known as a space invader, as they are so devoid of intelligence, they think women are not in 50% of top jobs, due to having caring responsibilities. They cannot understand. That most women don't want to work all the time, they want to be with their family. They also fail, to take into account the fact, that men who have caring responsibilities don't make it into the top jobs either, it is not determined by gender, it is determined by life choices. They do seem rather unintelligent. Any more nonsense from them? If you want to know what their real agenda is, let me use their own words. Fawcett believes that politicians who make decisions on our behalf, should be representative of the population as a whole. 
they make no bones about it, they do not believe in democracy, they believe the government should be manipulated to make up numbers, that they are obsessed about, numbers they claim are discriminatory, should be unfairly altered, so that they are happy. They also state, in particular, we campaign for a greater number of women in politics. Again, this is evidence they do not approve of the democratic, one-man, one-vote system, that has served Britain well for many years. They believe, that women should be pushed, forced, manipulated, or cheated into government, as opposed to being fairly elected like their male colleagues. Their attitude reminds me of a little fellow with a square mustache, one ball, and a funny accent, I can't recall his name. Charlie Chaplin. No, I think Chaplin had two testicles. Well Mary, we will have to leave it there, you have certainly done a good job of giving those buffoons at the Fawcett Society a verbal bitch slap, well done, and thank you. Thank you Hugh, it was no problem. Before we go, I have a joke for you. Let's hear it. Why did the men's rice activist cross the road? I don't know. His dick was stuck in the chicken. Until next time, goodbye.